In this video, I'm going to show you how to make your own HD remaster of Star Wars Rogue Squadron 2 using the Dolphin emulator. Rogue Squadron 2 remains one of my favorite Star Wars flight sims, and it is unfortunately still stranded on the GameCube to this day, and while it is one of the most beautiful games on the system, being locked to 480p and 4x3 aspect ratios kinda just make the game older than it still feels to play. But thanks to the Dolphin emulator, we can play Rogue Squadron 2 on a capable PC, with a lot of enhancements to its original look in both resolution and aspect ratio. And because of how polished this game really was upon first release, it just still feels so great to play even today. So in this video, I'm going to take you through how to make Rogue Squadron 2 just absolutely shine on a modern PC. So let's go ahead and get started. Now as we get started, this tutorial is specifically for the PC version of Dolphin. But that doesn't mean it doesn't also work on Mac and Linux, it's just that the folder structures are going to be different. You're going to need to know where your user folder is to continue along with this video. Rogue Squadron 2 remains one of the most demanding games for emulation in Dolphin, so you are going to need a pretty capable PC to run this pretty well. So on the CPU side, I just kind of have a general rule of thumb that you want to go with an Intel 10th Gen or AMD Ryzen 3000 or newer, and you want to try to get a clock speed of about 4 GHz. The game will run with less than that, but on the ground missions you will notice that there is going to be a lot more slowdown. So if you happen to have like a Steam Deck or an Asus ROG Ally, like those are powerful enough to run Rogue Squadron 2 for the most part, but again, you do just get a little bit of hitching on those ground missions. And then you really need to worry about thermal throttling on those as well. So again, this is just my rule of thumb for kind of like the good baseline to make sure you have the optimal performance all the way through the game, but it will run on stuff lower than this. But again, that four gigahertz clock speed is kind of like the sweet spot if you don't want to experience any major slowdowns. Now on the GPU side, this is going to be a lot less restrictive. So again, baseline around GTX 10 series or it's AMD equivalent or newer, and you wanna make sure that you have at least eight gigabytes of VRAM on there. So you should be able to run this game at 4K resolutions with a GTX 1080 or above and not really encounter much issue. I don't have all that hardware, so I can't say for certain that it will work just fine, but this is what I've used in the past. I used to have a GTX 1080, it ran the game at 4K just fine. As for the storage requirements, you're going to need around 7 gigs for Dolphin, the HD Texture Pack, and a copy of Rogue Squadron 2. And lastly, you are of course going to need a controller to play the game with. Mouse and keyboard controls for this type of game is awful, don't do it. And then you are going to need a North American copy of Rogue Squadron 2 that you need to source yourself. The legal download links are not provided on this channel, so don't ask. So the first thing we're going to do is download Dolphin. So we're just going to go into the Dolphin webpage here and go to the download tab. And we're just going to download the latest release. So just under the releases tab, you could grab the newest one for Windows. If you already have a copy of Dolphin installed, you can basically skip over this to the timestamp where we're going over Rogue Squadron 2 specific setup. So with Dolphin downloaded, we're just going to go ahead and get it extracted. And we can delete that original release. But inside you'll see a folder named Dolphin X64 and perfect. So we're going to make this a portable build of Dolphin just so that way everything is self-contained inside of it. That way it doesn't save anything into your Windows users folder. But we're going to go ahead and make a directory for this first. I just want to move this into the working directory I want it to be in first. I'm doing a side project with a secondary PC here to basically kind of make these feel like more official remasters. So I'm just gonna rename this folder Rogue Squadron 2 real quick. There we go. So we have my Rogue Squadron 2 folder and inside is Dolphin X64. This isn't necessary if you wanna skip over this part. This is again, just for me in this side project. But I want to put this in my C drive. I'm making a new folder named Games. And I'm just gonna throw that right in there. There we go. But anyway, moving on to Dolphin setup here. So again, we're gonna make this portable. So we're just gonna right click and make a new text document. If you can't see that, click on show more properties. If you're on Windows 11, I have classic context menus restored here. But we're just gonna name it portable. Portable.txt, just like this. And now we're gonna go ahead and launch into Dolphin. 
And then it's going to ask if you want to authorize information to be sent to Dolphin for performance things. You could select yes or no here. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to click on no for now. But in my Dolphin folder, you can see that it created a user folder right here after I started the program. If that doesn't create for you here, double check your spelling. Make sure that it is just portable and its extension is .txt. If you can't see file extensions, you can click on the view tab here, show, and then make sure file name extensions is checkmarked. But now I'm going to go ahead and add in my copy of Star Wars Rogue Squadron 2 to my game folder here. And I'm gonna rename this to just Rogue Squadron 2 just to make it a little bit shorter. Doesn't matter, but that's just how we're gonna do it. So again, you are going to need to source your own copy of Rogue Squadron 2. I have a guide on my channel on how to dump GameCube games using a modded GameCube or Wii if you're interested. Otherwise, you will just need to source this yourself. And again, it needs to be an NTSC version of the game for the HD texture pack to work. But over in Dolphin, we're going to just double click right here in the middle of the screen and we're going to set a user folder or we're going to select a game folder. So I'm just going to select that Rogue Squadron 2 folder and bam, there it is. It sees my copy of Rogue Squadron 2 right there. Excellent. So if you already have a version of Dolphin that you're running, we're just going to go ahead and configure some stuff for specifically for Rogue Squadron 2 so that way it doesn't mess with any of your global Dolphin configurations. So we're just gonna right click on Rogue Squadron 2 here and click on properties. Now under game config. So in our general tab here, there's one of two options we might wanna change in case we encounter some crashing within Rogue Squadron 2. The first option is to disable dual core mode. This will make it so the game just runs on a single core, which is again why you need to have a pretty beefy CPU to run this. And so this can typically prevent crashing in random loads. Otherwise, you could also try to synchronize your GPU thread with your CPU thread. Both of these options have potential to mitigate some crashes, but they won't outright eliminate them. Crashes can be hit and miss depending on your system, so just be aware of these options if they are needed. We're gonna go over to the Graphics tab here, and the first thing we're gonna do is set our backend. So you're gonna use either Direct3D12 or Vulkan. I typically find more success in using Vulkan here. But we're gonna tell the game to start in full screen, and you can set VSync if you experience some screen tears, but do know that it could cause some potential added latency to your controls. But again, this is just if you experience screen tearing. Now under shader compilation, you're gonna set either hybrid Uber shaders if you have a more mild GPU, but if you have a really high end GPU, you could set exclusive Uber shaders. And then we're gonna tell shaders to compile before starting, and this will prevent micro stutters as we play through Rogue Squadron 2. This game is notorious for it. So Uber shaders have been just the best thing that's happened to this game. And under aspect ratio, we also wanna change this over to 416 by nine since we're going to be using a widescreen code for this game so that way it doesn't try to switch automatically between four by three and 16 by nine because that can cause some glitching on menus and stuff. But now we're gonna go over to enhancements and we're gonna crank up our internal resolution. So for my GPU, I can handle 4K just fine. So, I mean, you can set a 1080p or anything under that as you need to. Now, anti-aliasing, we're not going to really need to worry about that with a 4K internal resolution, but you could set MSAA or SSAA in the general Dolphin config tab. We're just not going to really need to worry about it at 4K. Um, texture filtering, you could set this up to 16 times anisotropic, and you could force nearest or linear if you need to. Output resampling, so you can change between a lot of options here. It's personal preference on how you think it looks. I'm just gonna leave mine on default for now, but we're gonna enable per pixel lighting. And now we're gonna move over to the hacks tab. So this one is very important. Make sure that GPU texture decoding is turned off. This causes crashes in Rogue Squadron 2. Do not leave that on. The other option in here that we're interested in is the VBI skip. So if your CPU has trouble running this game, the VBI skip option will make sure that you get a very playable experience still at the cost of your frame rate. So audio won't crackle and sound awful and like want to make your ears bleed, but you will lose those frames depending on how much slower your CPU is compared to what the game is needing. Still great option to have and very useful on Steam Deck and ROG Ally when they start to have any thermal throttling happening. 
Now under the advanced tab, if you want to show any statistics or anything, you can just choose whatever the frick you want right here. I'm just gonna have show percent speed on for right now for demonstration purposes. But what we're interested in here is loading custom textures and prefetching our custom textures. This way we just get the best performance out of these textures. And that's all we're gonna do for the game config right now. But over in the gecko codes section here, you will see that we have a 16 by nine widescreen option. So we're gonna enable that. And we don't need to worry about disabling dither because the HD texture pack will do that for us. So we can just leave that one off for now, but we are going to enable 16 by nine widescreen. And then of course we need to turn on cheats in dolphin itself. So we'll do that here right now. So we're just gonna go ahead and close out of that. We're gonna go into the config options here and we're going to enable cheat codes. And then under the interface option where I'm just gonna turn off confirm on stop, panic handlers onto screen display messages because I just want it to feel a little bit more immersive. And then in the audio tab, if you are going to be using surround sound, like if you have your computer hooked up to a surround sound system, you are going to need to use one of the LLE options here to enable the Dolby ProLogic 2 decoder. This is going to require more out of your CPU. So if your system isn't capable of handling it, I just recommend just leaving it on HLE and using stereo audio. But now controls. So under port one, we're just gonna do standard controller and we're gonna go ahead and configure this. And so get your controller connected, hit the refresh box here if you connect it after you go into this menu. But we're gonna go ahead and select it. So I am going to be using my Xbox One game controller for demoing here. And just set up controls however you see fit. I like to set controls up with A on the Xbox controller being the A button on GameCube. And then for button B, I like to make this X because if you look at the standard Xbox or PlayStation button layout and then look at the GameCube layout, you can see that B is over on the left side. So I like to make this X or square. And then X is where B is. So I make that B on my Xbox controller. And then of course Y just sits up top. And then we could set up Z. And then start, do our D-pad. Now our thumbstick. And then for our thumbsticks, we're gonna calibrate these. So if you're going to be doing the calibrate option, make sure you're always using this controller to play the game. Otherwise you just need to calibrate it every time that you start it up. And this ensures that our actual range on our controller matches what a GameCube expects. So you can see the gray dot is what my Xbox controller is outputting and the red dot is what is being reported to Dolphin. So you can see that it gives us perfect control over the game. And then of course you could set dead zones as well. But now we're just gonna do the same thing. Now we're just gonna do the same thing with the C stick. And we're gonna calibrate that as well. And there we go. All right, now on to our triggers. So we're gonna set our L and R click here. So just set those to your right and left triggers, and then you can set the analog range for those as well right here. So that way you can see we got all the pressure needed to get what we need out of Rogue Squadron 2 here. And I like to change the threshold, push it up a little bit more. So that way you don't activate abilities before you reach the end of the pull. Otherwise you can end up closing your S foils or using a boost unintended. And then for rumble, if you want to get that set up, you just click on here and we can select our rumble variants here. And done. So again, controls are going to be a personal preference on how you want to set them up. This is just what I like because it kind of mirrors what the actual GameCube controller feels like in a X standard Xbox layout. But now that that is set, if you want to have inputs work while you may be like looking at a different screen instead of Dolphin, you can turn on background input so your controller could still work. But now let's go ahead and get the HD texture pack installed. This was done by General Han Solo. So we're just going to go ahead and click on the GameCube Star Wars HD texture packs link here. Going to go into the Rogue Leader folder and just right click on this and tell it to download. 
So with the texture pack downloaded, we just need to get it extracted. So it's in 7-zip format. So if you don't have 7-zip, just go ahead and get that installed. And then you can right click 7-zip and tell it to extract to GSWE64. And once extracted, you'll just see GSWE64 and inside a bunch of subfolders with all of our textures. Perfect. So back in our dolphin folder here, we're going to go into our user folder. All right. So now in our user folder, we're going to go into load and you'll see a textures folder. And we're going to drag that GSWE64 folder right in right there. And it is all set. And with that, we are now ready to enjoy our HD remaster of Star Wars Rogue Squadron. So from here, we're just going to double click on Star Wars Rogue Squadron 2. And give it a try. And so here we go. Star Wars Rogue Squadron 2 HD. So make your profile and start playing. So here we are, Rogue Squadron 2 with HD texture packs running at 4K resolution and widescreen. Just an absolutely incredible experience considering that this is indeed just a GameCube game at its core still. But it just looks and plays so beautifully even to this day that it's just so nice that we're able to experience this classic in a lot of glory like this. Now, if you'd like to save some space with your copy of Rogue Squadron 2, the game is taking up 1.36 gigabytes of space. So if you right click on the game within Dolphin, you'll see an option called Convert File, and this lets you change it between a bunch of different types, such as ISO, GCZ, WIA, and RVZ. So RVZ is the one that I would use, and you could change the block size here, change the compression method, just recommend just leaving it all basically the same and you can convert the game if desired. So doesn't save much space on Rogue Squadron. That's one of the reasons why I don't really bother with it a whole lot, but that option is available if you are interested. Now, another fun option that you might be interested in, if you want to kind of run this like a native PC program, you can actually use Dolphin to create a shortcut to Rogue Squadron 2. So if we just right click on Rogue Squadron 2, you can click on add shortcut to desktop and it will create just a standard shortcut here. And if you click on it, it will load up Dolphin and load up Rogue Squadron 2 instantly. So just a really fun little thing you could do here. And of course, if you'd like to make this icon a little more personalized here, you could just right click on it, go to properties, and then under the shortcut tab, change icon. And if you have an icon of something like the X-Wing, you could change it into that. So there we go. There's my Star Wars Rogue Squadron 2 Rogue Leader icon for launching Rogue Squadron 2. Just something a little silly to add to it. Pretty fun. Now, unfortunately, the widescreen code for Rogue Squadron 2 isn't without faults. It does cause crashes for me on the first level whenever you finish killing the deflection towers. So for that level, I just have to disable it to get past it, and then I could re-enable it and I've been able to finish the rest of the game without any issues. So do be aware of that. If you get a crash there, just disable that code for just that level, and then you can re-enable it and continue to enjoy Rogue Squadron 2 in your newly formed HD variant. But with that, we're going to go ahead and call it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this helps you get Rogue Squadron 2 up and running and playing in a way that is exciting and new. But here at the end of the video, just the usual favors to ask of all of you. If you haven't already, please be sure to hit that thumbs up, thumbs down button, depending on how much you like today's video, as well as hitting that sub button and notification bell so you can see when new videos go live on the channel. Loads always coming your way, and we'd love to have each and every one of you along for the ride. Now, for anyone interested in further helping support the channel to keep it going, please be sure to check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. For just a dollar a month, you really make a big difference in our channel and it means the world to us. Big thank you to all of our current backers. Couldn't do it without you. Thank you for believing in what we do here. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we'll see you all back next video.